And you know, what is the history book of the Bible? In the New Testament, there's one book in there that is a history book. Acts of the Apostles, right? When we read Acts of the Apostles, we learn how those apostles went out and spread the good news of Christ. Did they go out and explain how many sacraments they are, what's the different types of sin, what are holy days of obligations, da 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 da? What did they go out and teach? This is what those apostles taught. Remember Christ commanded those apostles to go out and teach? This is what they taught to non-Christians. You've got to start with the foundation, the absolute basics of the faith. That's what they taught. So let's go back and read John 3, 16 and 17 again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. You look at those verses... Now let's see if the gospel message is included in those verses. For God so loved the world. He gave His only Son. Whoever believes in Him shall not die but have eternal life. <laughs> For God does not send His world, Son into the world to condemn, but the world might be saved through Him. Isn't that incredible news? Isn't that reason, a wonderful reason, to be thankful for our faith right there? In the absolute foundation of our faith? I just wanted to kind of bring this up, because sometimes we just take it for granted. The absolute basics. But you know what? Those absolute basics are the greatest need to give thanks for our faith. Because it's all there. There's nothing more important than that. <laughs> so what do we have to be thankful for? The absolute foundation of our faith. Call the gospel message. But now I can ask a question. Is that all there is now to know? Is that all there is to our faith? To having faith and knowing our faith? Is just knowing this? We have to grow in our faith. Okay, we have to grow in our faith. As I showed you, this is a kind of a sketch of our, of our faith. And the absolute foundation is knowing Christ. But then the question I ask, is that all there is to it? Well, let's see what the Bible says as far as understanding our faith. Let's take a look at some passages that might give us some more insight on understanding our faith. You ready? We've got a lot of passages to look at. First of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Brothers, the trouble was that I could not talk to you as a spiritual man, but only as men of flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk and did not give you solid food because you were not ready for it. You are not ready for it even now. Okay, Paul's talking to this group of people in Corinth. And he says they're infants in Christ. I like to call them baby Christians. They're some baby Christians. And what did Paul say he fed those baby Christians? Milk. Milk. How many of us are parents here? What do you feed your very young infant when they're first born? Milk. Why? What do you say, Amber? What? Why, why do you feed a baby milk? They're not ready for solid. They're not ready for anything else. That's the only thing they can take, right? So that's what the, the, the basic food that a baby gets is milk. And that baby grows from that milk. Paul's making the same analogy here to baby Christians. He says... I'm going to give you the milk of our faith. And remember we talked about those apostles going out and spreading the good news? What did they initially spread? The very basics. 
or the milk. I like to call this the milk of our faith. There's nothing more basic than this in our life as a Christian. So as a baby Christian, we need to be fed the milk. That's what the milk is. The absolute basics of the faith. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Be as eager for milk as newborn babies, pure milk of the Spirit to make you grow unto salvation. There goes this theme about milk again. Peter's talking about milk. And he's here, like newborn infants, long for that spiritual milk. Do you Peter calling this spiritual milk? What do you think he's referring to? The very basics of the faith. For baby Christians, you get fed milk. But then after a point in time, as all you parents know, the baby grows up, right? Then things change. Do you think think the Bible talks about this? Probably does. does. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 5, 13 and 14. Hebrews chapter 5, 13 and 14. And verse and chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, 13 and 14. Everyone who lives on milk lacks experience of the word of righteousness, for he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties are trained by practice. Chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, let us leave behind the basic teaching about Christ and advance to maturity without laying the foundation all over again. Repentance from dead works and faith in God. What does it say here? Everyone who lives on milk lacks experience of the world, for he is a child. Now the author of Hebrews says, if you live on milk all of your life, you're going to be a child all your life. So what is the author saying? But solid food is for the mature. Then it goes to verse 1 in chapter 6. Therefore, let us leave behind the basic teaching about Christ and advance to maturity. What is the author of Hebrews saying here? Don't be a spiritual baby all of your life. Grow up. Grow up in your faith. And that's what we're commanded to do as Christians. We're not supposed to be a baby Christian all of our lives. And kind of put it into the analogy. This is the milk of our faith. But we're commanded to grow up in our faith. So our faith consists more of just knowing about the milk part. We need to know about the solid food. And that leads us now to the next component in our pyramid about knowing our faith. We need to know Christ, but we need to know another component here. So let's see what the scripture tells us. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Who wrote Ephesians? Okay, we got Paul again. What was he telling us here? Gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body. Who's this referencing? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus now. The church, which is his body. So Paul's telling us, making an analogy here. The church, the body of Christ. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, 23 and 24. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Did you read that last couple words again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. In everything. 